Hello there good people and welcome back to the channel. In case you watched our recent video about MSI's announcements at Computex, you already know that we got the chance to do some very early initial testing for Nvidia's new mid-range GPUs, the laptop RTX 5070 and the just released RTX 5060. Since this is the last video I'm going to do right here in Taipei and I actually have to pack my bags right after I'm done recording this, I hope it's okay for you guys that this is going to be a bit shorter than usual and that I will cut right to the chase. Full transparency, these laptops are technically engineering samples, but apparently the performance is representative of what you will get with models you should be able to buy soon. But just keep that in mind when putting those numbers in perspective. Again, we only had a few hours with these puppies, so I only had time for a very limited number of benchmarks. Still, we should be able to get a pretty good early look at what especially the 5060 is capable of and if I dare say so, it actually shapes up to be a very solid mobile GPU overall. And with that out of the way, let's get into it. Before we get to our results though, let me quickly walk you through our samples for today. Our RTX 5070 model is the all new MSI Crosshair 18HX, which combines a 150W variant of the mobile GPU with Intel's 275HX, alongside 32GB of RAM and a 2TB SSD. All those juicy frames will be rendered on a massive 18-inch QHD Plus display and apparently you will be able to get this one for about $1800. The Self A16 combines a 95 watts RTX 5060 with a Ryzen 7, 32 gigs of RAM and a QHD Plus 240Hz IPS display once again, all wrapped up in a pretty sleek looking full metal magnesium alloy chassis. So how about we kick things off with 3 Mark? To already give you a pretty complete picture of how the new cards stack up against their direct predecessors, I added some additional devices. But as always, we are talking notebooks here, so the power limits and especially the CPU combination can make a huge difference. We have also been able to test some additional models with the 5070 at different wattages, which already paints a pretty complete picture how much performance is affected with different power levels. In Firestrike we will of course see the choice of CPUs influence our numbers the most, which is impressively demonstrated by the Crosshair 18 and even the 5060 can hold its own surprisingly well. Time Spy tells a similar story, even though the 5070 cannot really set itself apart from its predecessor and once again the 5060 performs quite admirably. That changes slightly in Port Royal since it's a bit more GPU bound, while Steel Nomad brings things quite close together, be it in between the new cards or their 40 series siblings. For some real world insights, we tested Cyberpunk and Baldur's Gate 3. In 1080p at ultra settings and in CD Projekt Red's RPG, things are actually not looking too bad, especially not for the 5060, which can pretty much match the lower wattage RTX 5070 in the gigabyte error here, while the crosshair can score a pretty sizable lead in general. Baldur's Gate 3 seems to need a bit more additional CPU juice here than the 8 core Ryzen is able to provide and in general our numbers here are much closer together, with the 18 inch Intel HX powered crosshair coming out on top once again. In QHD things get quite a bit more interesting, especially for the 5060 and in Cyberpunk the sleek MSI gives us some pretty solid performance gains over the last gen 4060 even when that one is paired with much faster CPUs. Again things change in Baldur's Gate showing once again that gaming performance is really dependent on many different factors and can vary greatly between games. Of course we cannot quite talk about Nvidia's 50 series cards without talking about DLSS and frame gen and I did some additional testing with Cyberpunk on the A16. I opted for 1080p on the stealth in the RT Ultra setting for some more eye candy without completely overwhelming the 5060 with path tracing and natively I got okayish results but hardly anything I would call a smooth experience. But doing the usual test runs with DLSS in its different setting levels and with frame generation really shows what you are buying into when opting for Nvidia's new generation. Getting around 170 FPS in the benchmark and pretty much the same or higher numbers in game is pretty impressive for this class of GPU running at not even 100 watts. I also had no issues with latency and it was more than playable for me, but as always that is a very subjective thing and your mileage may vary here. Alright, that should already be it for today. I know the situation with these cards is not only about raw GPU processing power, but also the whole video memory situation. 
And yes, you will run into trouble with certain settings, resolutions and games. But I think even our early testing showed that this will not be a universal situation and it also seems like we will hopefully see prices for these models with the mid-range cards be more affordable across the board. Especially 5060 notebooks might be very attractive judging from our early results, in some cases making the 5070 upgrades obsolete unless they are paired with high-end GPUs. So please folks, let me know what you think. Please sound off in the comments below. Thanks a ton for watching. Please leave a like and sub on your way out. My name is Alex, you have been absolutely amazing and I can't wait to see you all in the next one. Take care.